morning everyone and welcome to this um, presentation today. Um, I'm Dr. Rachel Horowitz. I'm an assistant professor at Washington State University and my research focuses on understanding past economic activities through the lens of lithics or stone tools. However, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the rise of sedentary settlements, agriculture, and states all in the Maya region. When we're talking about the Maya region, we're talking about this region we often call part of Mesoamerica, and this is made up of the modern day countries of Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. So much of the Maya region, the sort of more low-lying areas, is a hot, humid, tropical and subtropical climate, with cooler temperatures, more temperate areas in the highland um, areas with higher elevation. This is very important because there's an importance of interregional trade between areas with different goods. The chronology of the Maya region is very lengthy and rather extensive chronology. But today, with our discussion of early um, agriculture settlements as well as um, the origins of states and cities, we'll be talking mostly about the Preclassic time period. Uh, here, both the Middle and Late Preclassic, between about 1000 BCE and CE 250. To start off with, we'll talk a little bit about the agricultural resources that are available in this region. As you may know, corn, beans, and squash are the predominant um, main food crops that you may know about from this region. Although, there are lots of other types of domesticates, including avocados, chilies, gourds, various types of fruits, as well as turkeys. Like in other world regions, the process of domestication is quite long uh, and varies throughout different regions of this area. And this includes having the presence of domesticated squash, probably as early as 8000 BCE. And you can see some of those early squash um, materials that have been recovered from archaeological contexts on the right hand side of the slide. And there was corn or maize by about 5000 BCE or possibly earlier. And you can see there in the middle an image showing you what the wild ancestors of maize, which is called teosinte, look like in comparison to a modern corn cob. Much of this evidence comes from outside of the Maya area, but it illustrates that there was a gradual adoption of domesticated plants that were used gradually through time. So this brings us to the question of what do early villages in the Maya region look like? We have evidence of early perishable houses, and you're seeing here some Im an image from the site of Cuello in Belize, which as you can see in the map here is located in the northern part of modern day Belize, and dates to about 2000 BCE. And what we see is that early on, around 2000 BCE, we have evidence of these low-lying house platforms, and the image that you're seeing on the right is the presence of post holes, where the um, posts from pole and thatch houses would have been, as you can see in that image. There's also evidence of storage areas, as well as tools that would have been used for the preparation of domesticated maize. So what this shows us is that these early sedentary populations in this region were occupying small villages made of perishable structures. There is much later occupation at Cuello as well, and one thing that we see from this excavations there uh, is that there's continuity in terms of the occupation of the site and the people continue to live there. The reuse of space becomes very important also when we talk about the earliest evidence of monumental architecture or these large constructions that would have taken cooperation in labor to build them. An example of a monumental type of architecture from the Maya region are these types of architectural constructions or buildings called e-groups. And e-groups are structures where you have, there are groups of structures where you have two different buildings um, and you usually have one smaller building and then the one which is larger. And you can see that on the right hand side here, we have the smaller building here um, and then this longer building with the three small buildings on top of it. And as you can see from this image here on the right, um, at least some of these large monumental constructions or e-groups had astronomical alignments associated with the rising and the setting of the sun on the solstice and the equinoxes. These types of buildings are found very early on in the Maya region, and there's a little bit of variation in what they looked like at different sites in the region. And you can see that on this, the left-hand side of the slide here, 
you see that there are different um, forms to those buildings, but they all have the same thing of having the smaller building and then the longer building here. The name E group really has nothing to do with the function of it, but it is just named after the first one of these groups that was identified, um, and that's the E group that's found at Washaktun, a site in modern day Guatemala, and these are images of what the E group at Washaktun looks like today uh, after excavation and consolidation. So you can see the smaller structure here on the right, and then the larger rain structure there, and then a close up of some of the plaster masks that decorated these structures. So e-groups can also provide us with some important information about how sedentism began in the Maya lowlands and its relationship with political authority and sort of elite leaders during this time period. Uh, Takeshi Inamata and colleagues excavated the e-group at the site of Sebal in Guatemala, and they suggest that the earliest construction in the region at the e-group was actually done by different groups of people who were semi-sedentary, so who were moving around the landscape periodically and came together to build this earliest stage of that building. And this began around 950 BCE. Over time, that population became more sedentary, and as they began to live at Sebal itself and became more sedentary population, we also see evidence of people who had more power and wealth than other individuals, or those elite individuals. So Inamana and colleagues suggest that those elite leaders were the ones who were organizing the construction of those large buildings. So what we've seen from the Sebal example is that these early monumental buildings, like the e-group, are the spaces where these elite rulers start to show their political power by directing the construction of these buildings. Um, and we start to see these sites grow over time. In the Preclassic, the best example of a larger settlement is the site of El Mirador, in, also in Guatemala. Um, and so you can see here on the left a map of the site of El Mirador and its location there on the right hand side of the screen. And El Mirador has been investigated by Richard Hansen and colleagues, and this dates to a little bit later in time, about 200 BCE. But it has some of the largest evidence of construction during this time period and has really good evidence of rule by a centralized political authority or a leader. The site of Mirador itself contains some of the largest structures that were ever built in this region, including the Tigre and Danta complexes, which are pictured here on this slide um, in the drawing. And you can see that in addition to the large buildings, there's also evidence of roads or sock bays, as well as water management or storage areas labeled here on this map as aguadas. So the large building of these structures really illustrates the fact that there was a centralized political leadership that had emerged during this time period. We can understand something about that leadership by looking at some of the structures themselves. Um, some of the buildings from this time have decorative masks on the outside made of plaster, which is very common during this preclassic time period. And the imagery that we see on these masks, like that that you see here, reflects imagery that we see later in time associated with the political leaders um, later in the Maya region. And so we can also assume that these materials from the pre-classic period were associated with rulers. And the images that you see here are of the principal bird deity, which is often associated with divine rulership during the classic period. So what this really brief summary of these materials has shown us is that in the Maya area, we have evidence of the rise of divine kingship in the pre-classic period. We see early evidence of large structures or monuments like those e-groups that are built by both sedentary and mobile peoples, and then they become used by sedentary peoples. And those are spaces in which early leaders are using their political power uh, to help to build those uh, and then later to maintain that political power. Uh, and then we also see a lot of evidence of continuity through time. So things that we see in the pre-classic period, we can see continuing into later time periods in the Maya region as well, uh, highlighting the continuity in traditions there. So thank you all very much. Uh, and as I mentioned, this was a very brief overview. So please do um, investigate more on any of these topics if they're of interest to you all.